guys hurt a lot worse than get on a what, treadmill, what's right? Gonna, what's going to happen when Kyrie comes back here? When you get fans chanting now, you Kyrie, you Kyrie. Now, yeah. how should, are you going to throw, are you going to throw 16,000 people out? How's that work? Right. I mean, I'm, that, I'm appalled at our fan base for that. And people say, well, why, why, why are you? Because we have, we have kids there. If these were grown people, if everybody was uh, 21 and above, I'd be okay. That's, that's cool. That's cool. You can say what you want to say. But when you have kids who are 10 years old, yeah. seven years old, you know, just, you know, 13 years old, and they chant, they're chanting right along with, you know, their parents. The Cedric Maxwell Podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. Plenty to get into, Max. One hell of a week in the NBA. I am Joseph Pavo. He is, of course, my co-host, Cedric Maxwell. Max, we got Luka dropping 73. We got the Celtics giving the heat. Uh, uh, a major L. Would you got to tell me what the arena was like, especially right after the Terry Rozier trade, man? He fans were really hyped up about this about this game. We'll get into that in a little bit. But first things first, Doc Rivers is back in the NBA. Yeah, what a heck of a week, man! I, I, I think that takes the takes the cake, or or maybe the seven three point, wherever you want to put it, man. Headlines all throughout the week, but let's start there. Doc Rivers back in the NBA, uh, head coach. Of the Milwaukee Bucks, Adrian Griffin dismissed out of Milwaukee. What's your uh, f- first of all? What was your initial take uh, when you heard about the dismissal at the time? Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks tied for the second best record in the NBA. Have you ever seen something like that? And then second of all, well, second question I should say: Doc Rivers getting the phone call, and you find out that he's going to be heading to Milwaukee. Man, what, what's your reaction, Max? Well, I think that if I look at it initially, you know, it, it tells me that the players are are more in control. Uh, superstars in this league about who they want as a coach. Uh, when you have Giannis and Dane uh, essentially saying, well, we, you know, I like Adrian, but there was never a vote of confidence. If there would have been a vote of confidence, there wouldn't have been a, been a change. Um, this team, if you look at Milwaukee, I think they're flawed defensively. Uh, when you lose, uh, and as much as I, I love, you know, when you think about Dane Lillard, what he brings to the table, but defensively, this team has a bunch of holes. And you can see that the games they play, other than the game they played with the Celtics, which was a schedule loss, um, you look at the games they've lost here recently. Uh, they've had Giannis. They've had Dane. They've got a couple of wins in last-second buzzer beaters that maybe they wouldn't have gotten. Uh, I think it's so. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of back and forth. Uh, and to see Adrian Griffin have one of the have the second best record in the Eastern Conference and to be fired, that that doesn't bode well for a coach uh, with stability uh, in this league. And you look at things going on, and, and same thing with Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick gets two interviews in Atlanta, and what happens? No job. They hire no somebody job. else. Yeah. So... So it, the, the whole coaching carousel right now is in, in flux. And for Doc Rivers to come back in, did I expect this? No. Is it a major surprise? No. Because I think Doc wanted to give – Doc's a coach. Uh, he's, you know, he's a decent broadcaster, but I think he's a better coach. And he wants to get back into the mix. And this might be another opportunity uh, to have one of those high-profile teams – uh, and seeing if we can win another championship, another chip, because so many people have been talking exactly that. Doc Rivers, Doc Rivers, is the only one won. All he did was this, so he can get back on the horse right now and have some pretty good horses to ride. You know, I'm glad you brought up the the schedule loss, the Celtics schedule loss, the worst loss of the season for the Celtics. <laughs> that didn't even convince the Bucks, you know, or Giannis and these guys that, hey, we can still compete, right? We got this uh, amazing record, you know, but the defense, if you look at all the stats, it's been terrible this year. And they know Giannis has been there. Giannis has made so many uh, trips, you know, deep, deep trips into the play or uh, 
deep uh, runs in the, throughout the playoffs, obviously won it all back in 2021. So he knows what it takes. And he's looking around. And he's like, look, this isn't it. You know, we don't like the defense. This, this isn't exactly well, why did you get rid the, way, of, the way a championship team is taken. Why did you, you get rid of Drew? I know, but see, that's the thing, Max. You can't have it both ways. If that's what you think, then why right. in the world would you get rid of Drew? Right. Now, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, to because Drew is one of the best defenders in the in the in the land. He favored Giannis. Giannis yeah. favored Dane. Right. And you know, be careful sometimes what you get. Uh, right. Your team is a your team has, is I think defense defensive liability when you look at them. So let's not be surprised with all this all this stuff going on and where they're at. They're, they're, they are they are who you think they are. And, and and we think they're a great offensive team, but they have defensive laws. And how can you win the NBA if you don't have a have that defensive stopper from time to time? Right. And I think the front office never replaced that defense. You know, and it's like you're not going to have the same result if you don't replace that defensive identity. Essentially, you know, all of a sudden, Brooke Lopez has to come out of the, uh, the, the from the out of the paint to go defend guys because the backcourt can't isn't defending the way it used to, you know? So, yeah, I mean, and look, you call Doc Rivers because this is the guy that you call to straighten things out, not only their their mental state, right, because clearly they checked out on the last coach, but this is the guy who's going to say, hey, look, we're going to do this championship run or not. And if you're Doc Rivers to, to coach Giannis on, on the Kubo and Damian Lillard, that opportunity, there's, there's no way you're passing that up. This is the only opportunity, if you ask me, or probably easily at the top of the list of the fewest, you know, opportunities that he would take right now in his career. And only I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, only job you can see that would be different for Doc Rivers would be if he went to the Lakers. It's going to be a high-profile team he was going to go to if he came back. So this is as this is a high-profile team. It's a great. It could be a great. It could be a great opportunity for him, but it also could be a curse mm. because you might get back into the middle of this thing and you're going. Whoa, whoa! I, I did not count on this. I right. mean, he had, you know, he had Joel and B. You know, you think he had Joel and B and Maxi and guys like that. Now you get to Giannis and 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 Dane. But after that, you think your team your team becomes a little bit shorter. And then then you go to Portis, and okay, now where do you go? Right. Uh, and clearly, we see that Middleton isn't the Middleton of old shooting the jump shot or defending the basketball. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tricky slope right now. These guys are um, trying to navigate. Yeah, it has to be right, Max. I mean, it's almost like you, you almost have to look ahead to the next season, not to say that you check out on this year, but is it fair to judge doc rivers? If this team doesn't have a deep playoff run this year, and, you know, it doesn't make any difference. That's how it's going to be. People are going to so? judge you good. Is it fair? Probably wouldn't be, but people are going to be, you came in to save the franchise. So here, let's see what you can do. So right. are you saying, you, did you get Doc Rivers for the immediate now? Or you got Doc Rivers for what he can do two, two, three years down the line? I don't think that you got Doc Rivers for that. You got Doc Rivers for this run right now. Uh, right. Giannis happened to love him. Uh, Dame loves him. Dame, there was a, a, a bird that I saw on Dame where he had, uh, you know, how am I going to win a championship if I don't have Doc Rivers? So, so that's 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 the story. I can't wait, man. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets. Which players will score a touchdown? How many points will be scored? And so much more. New customers join today and you get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Boston to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. This is probably his, this is his last call for alcohol. That's what I'm thinking, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like you say, man, last this, call this for is, alcohol. Yep. This is when Joe Sway was at the bar back in the day. And they'd be like, okay, we got last call for alcohol. And you'd be like, yo, 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 yo. Let me get another, <laughs> let me get another Tito's. Let me get another Tito's, okay? I'm good here. I'm good. <laughs> But we got to see this thing through, man. I mean, look, this is 
obviously it's going to be it's a multi-year deal he's not going anywhere but yeah i would agree man this is probably his last stint this is this is the final chapter of his coaching career for sure yeah now you, right, so, you asked me about what yeah i was gonna say and let's, let's get to uh let's get this let's get the south beach let's get to uh even though it is a south beach but we always think of what lebron said let's get that to what happened in miami man it got a little spicy down there and not for the heat the celtics tore them up man a historic win as the well, celtics here's lit the it up from behind the arc what's up yo here's a, here's another thing though you give in that game it was the second night we're back to back for miami Celtics were the rest of the team at the hotel, out by the pool, hanging out. Miami had played before the day before. Tough right. game. They lost that game. And then the last people you see, you want to see coming into the building right now, are the Celtics. And the Celtics, Miami just didn't have any answers. Uh, they had no answer at all when it came to Porzingis. Porzingis was lighting them up. Brown was lighting them up. Tatum was like the, the Celtics were just hitting on all cylinders. And the Celtics played their game. I don't care how good Jimmy Butler is. Right. Jimmy Butler's Jimmy Butler's not going to beat them this year. Not like that. Jimmy Butler is not going to beat the Boston Celtics. Bam was decent, but they'd have to have a lot more from from you know Tyler Hero. Right. Uh, Terry I just see Terry, a gap, Max. That's the thing. Terry, I see a significant Terry, gap Terry between Rozier. the two. And I, I, I love Terry Rozier's game. With some of the things he, he does. But I'm also a huge Kyle Lowry fan. I'm probably a bigger Kyle Lowry fan because all I know is Kyle Lowry is a winner, man. You you can put anything by him. He might not be. He's not as fast. He's not this. He's not that. And, man, that's the guy who's going to be out there for a veteran's minimum. That, uh, you know, you, you the Celtics talk about, you know, possibly getting a guard. Would that be somebody you want to pick up? But the Knicks, do, would they want to do that? Uh, Philly? a uh, place to, you know, that, that he could go in and help them out. So sure. I, I think he's going to land someplace. Obviously, you know, it's not going to be in Charlotte. Uh, so all they want to do is here, take your money and, and, and go home. That's why they want to get rid of Terry's contract and kind of start over and then kind of move on from there. But uh, great opportunity for him. Yeah, but I don't, I, I think that the matchup, there are a lot of matchup problems this year, more matchup problems this year for Miami than there ever has been uh, with the Celtics. And I think you look at Porzingis, Porzingis presents a huge problem. Right. Uh, Bam, over the last couple of years, he's just been roaming defensively, uh, you know, because if you guard Rob Williams, if you can keep him away from the rim to block, you know, to dunk, uh, you know, he wouldn't get a lot of more offense. Right. But now that when you have Porzingis stepping out, knocking down threes or, or driving toward the paint, and I talked to somebody, he twisted his ankle, but they don't think it was a severe twist. So we'll see if he's going to be back tonight uh, for the game. Or they're right. going to sit in doubtful, but yeah. yeah. Let him rest for a couple more days. Right. Yeah, I mean, listen, that that's the thing, man. I, I just see the, the significant gap. And, and I always looked at the Porzingis move as a direct – you know, obviously, a, a, what, what was best for this team, what was best for starting lineup, what was best for Tatum and, and, and Jalen Brown, but mm -hmm. also – Based off of what happened in that Eastern Conference final series last year, you know, they didn't have someone like that. Like you like you just put it, Rob Williams, what they were able to do with him and make him, you know, not a factor at times throughout that series, attacking the rim. You need now you got someone like Porzingis that you have to go out and defend, right? You you can't leave him out there because he'll get going from behind the yard. Like you go, did. he he will he will defend the rim as well. Knock the shots down, he'll defend the right. rim. He's not gonna block the shots the way Rob will, but because he's so long. He's going to change the trajectory of shots. Exactly. And that can be right. just as effective. Uh, that so resistance. Yeah. I don't for sure. I don't know. That that the matchup problem to me is one that I look at is going to be Miami's really going to be tested this year. Uh, right. Now, I think one of the funny things people are talking about down in Miami is that Eric Spoelstra uh, just finished his divorce and then signed his new contract after the divorce was completed. Yeah. Miami's real for that. Is, is, is that smart? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to share that new money with your ex-wife. You're doing the whole organization. They're a real one. New money. And so yep. a lot of people were talking about that down in Miami, but just a, a very, uh, very surreal moment. Thinking about that. Thinking about the way the Celtics are playing. Um, I thought they might lose one of those games. I thought they might lose. You know, they beat Houston. 
just kind of messed around with the game. Then they went and slapped Dallas around. Yeah, and that, that game, was impressive. That was an impressive win, man. Yeah, Probably my favorite, my favorite wins of the season. Yeah, and then you turn around and you you, you demolish uh, Miami and and give them again second night with back to back. Very difficult for any team to play, but especially when you're talking about a top tier team. And one thing right. we're looking at right now, Celtics as one of those top tier teams. I think they found their stride too, man. What are you thinking, Max? I believe they have. I mean, it's a lot of different things they're able to do right now. Um, Joe Mazzula had said that early. I was actually on the plane with him. He said, Max, he said, I can see our office getting better. I was like, whoa. And that was early on when they were playing well. And now you think about getting Holiday more involved. I think he's doing this sort of round his shots and in the play where he can get some shots. Uh, uh, Derek White playing the way he he plays, um, uh, so it's it's scary for the it's scary for the rest of the Eastern Conference. It's scary for the rest of the NBA. Do you think that's what's triggering these uh, these 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 moves uh, so early before the, the trade deadline? I mean, we're, we're, it's approaching, but I mean, you got the Pacers making moves. You got the what the New York Knicks did and the, and the Toronto Raptors, you know. And look, the New York Knicks since that trade, OG Abinou, you know, OG Abinou, he's just been incredible for those guys, and he had a one mm-hmm. heck of a win the other night. So don't look now, but all of a sudden they're in the top four of the Eastern Conference. Do you think the Celtics triggering this? I think that they they do see uh, warfare. And that they feel like everybody is just an arms race. Right. So you're at pieces. Uh, the Knicks have been as good as we've seen them in the last couple of years. Uh, but for him, them to lose Robinson, their center, and him out, and trying to change on the fly what they're able to do, right. I think that's what the Knicks are doing. It's a good uh, point. I look at Indiana. Indiana has to add. They want to add some size and some more scoring. Now, they, do they need any more scoring? One of the top scoring teams, but they needed some size and maybe a little bit more length. And yeah. you got that when you got Siakam. Uh, you, you're able to move on that. The guy that I kind of feel bad for, I don't feel bad for, is uh, Bruce Brown. Uh, uh, Boston native. Uh, won his chip uh, with uh, with Denver and then turned around and got a bag from Indiana. But before he could he sure did. go in the bag, he's... <laughs> He's out towards Toronto already. Yeah, yeah. So the the league is 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 really is really something. And then for you to talk about scoring in this league, Booker scores sixty plus and you lose. Is that how that goes? <laughs> cat, cat, cat scores sixty two, yeah. and he get he he they lose and he gets benched. <laughs> And then, the, and then uh, Coach Finch is talking about how uh, the team do, was just trying to feed him. You know, he yeah. felt like the, the the team kept going to him too much, and it was uh, it was obvious. You know, as as the uh, as the, the 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 lead dwindled. You know, because <laughs> they did they did have a big lead in that game. So yeah. then they they lose they lose the game, and it's uh, they get Joel Embiid scoring seventy plus. I mean. The numbers are the the numbers are absolutely stupid. I agree with yeah, what Paul man. Pierce is saying. Paul Pierce said, "You know, hey, are, are you playing anymore? Are you playing defense?" <laughs> right. right. I mean, I mean, <laughs> Kevin Garnett has to be doing cartwheels right now, thinking about you know guys not defending. But the three point line, would hate, this. Would three hate this. Line has made it almost mute now. That right. guys score more points, and that's how things are going to go. Right. Yeah. Luca. I mean, Luca dropping 73, uh, Booker dropping 62. But, but real quick, one one uh, question uh, about Luca I, I wanted to ask you, man. Have you, did you see the ejection with the fan? And uh, I did not see it. I didn't see it. Okay. Well, just lo- long story short, I, according to Luca, this guy was, was heckling throughout the half. But what was reported was what led to the ejection. So apparently the guy said something along the lines of, uh, hey, Luca, why don't you get on the treadmill? Something about, you know, him being out of shape. And he triggers the – it's on camera. He looks at the referee and says, get this guy out of here. When he's asked about it, he uh, goes at uh, – he, he goes at a, a reporter about how he's always the one to, to point something like that out. And why didn't you tell the whole story? He was cursing me the whole half. You know, you didn't, you, you, you didn't report about that. But then mm. – which I, then, because I, I feel like I, you, we got to give Lucas props here, man. He did a 180 when he went on with uh, the guys on TNT, and he said, listen – 
I shouldn't have done that, you know. And he had his old attire look, you know, he got the vest and the the tie. Like I feel like it was a whole like I messed up type of thing. Cause cause initially when he said in the uh press conference, he was like, Look, I would never want to get somebody kicked out. They pay good money for these seats, but I had it. I I, I you know, I had I I heard enough or whatever. But yeah, then he no, goes on the and he's like, you know what? I was in my feelings. That's my bad. I should have kicked that guy but out. That, but that happens, I think, more so in the eighties. When when guys, do, you know, what what would happen that with yeah, Kyrie? You guys heard a lot worse than get on a what, treadmill, what's right? Gonna, what's going to happen when Kyrie comes back here? When you get fans chanting now, you Kyrie, you Kyrie. now, yeah. how should are you going to throw? Are you going to throw sixteen thousand people out? How's that work? Right. I mean, I'm that I'm appalled at our fan base for that, and people say, "Well, why? Why? Why are you?" Because we have we have kids there. If these were grown people, if everybody was uh, twenty one and above, I'd be mean, okay. That's that's cool. That's cool. You can say what you want to say, but when you have kids who are ten years old, yeah. seven year, you know, just you know, thirteen years old, and they chant, they're chanting right along with you know their parents or the people around them. That to me, that's not cool. That's not that's not good stuff. I and that is one of those things that I remember Greg Popovich was mad with his fan base that time when they were uh, booing Kawhi. And he yeah. said, uh, oh, hell no, we're, we're better than that. Yeah, or, yeah, remember, it was yeah. a game that was done in, it was a football game one time. And um, they were throwing snowballs or doing something in Cincinnati. And and the guy went and got on the microphone, the coach went and said, God damn it. He said, this, this ain't Cleveland. You know, we ain't doing this. And 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 fan fans have kind of gotten out of control, but the players at the same time, their their feelings, they they you know their their feelings, they're real soft with their feelings, just the way. You can't really say anything to him that would be especially <laughs> by especially by his weight. I guess he hit a nerve yeah. there. He must have yeah. hit a nerve. Look yeah. at like that. Is that is that like calling a, a woman? Is that like you see a woman you dated somebody before? Damn, baby, can you drop a few pounds? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Joe Sway, is that a no-no? Is that a that's no-no? The, that, that's the biggest no-no of the no-nos. Yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. Well, how, do, how do you say it to a woman in, in that case? We say, God, you want to go, hey, babe, want we just go work out? Is that a good way to say it? Or does, she take, to, uh, or does she take a, or she take offense of that? No, no, she won't. No, you, you got to say, uh, let, let, let's take a walk around the city. You know, it, it's got to be nice out, though. That's the thing. If, it, if it's cold and winter, forget it. You got to save it for the, for the spring. You got to save it. But, man, I'm just surprised that Luca Luca did this. But at the same time, again, I got to give him his props because he did the 180. He said, look, I was in my feelings. I shouldn't have had that guy kicked out, you know. So I like it. You should give him, give him, give him a free so uh, pair so of what tickets. Do you, what do you do? Does he go back and apologize to the fan? Does he find that person? He should. He should try. Give him. Give him a pair of tickets or something. Hook him up. Okay. Okay. Right. And then, and then make a joke out of it about his about his weight and see what he says. But, but my my last question for you, Max, though, with the, in line with everything you just said about all these guys dropping points and left and right, seventy three points for for Luca, you know, sixty two for Booker and B seventy. Like Paul said, what's going on in the NBA, man? You you think this is there's something to this? Is the NBA people, people want to play defense anymore? The soft is cotton. That w- they always say about defenders, they don't get up in you the way that, and, and the league has, the league in a lot of ways has promoted that. Well, by the hand, no hand checking, no this, no that. And this league is about scoring. And so because of that, they they put it on the table that guys, that the offensive players have so much more uh, leverage than the defensive yeah. players. I mean, it's like when you see a guy on the fast break, and he's running, he's going towards the layup. How many times have we seen the defender essentially try to dodge away from the guy because he don't want to get hit and then and one? So right. I think the, the rules have have manifested uh scoring and scorers a lot more, making them more so much more valuable to the city. Because look, just way it's like this. Nobody wants to nobody wants to see a freaking uh, you know. Uh, you know, your game, a baseball game, 2-1. Nobody wants to see that no more. Nobody wants to see, you know, yeah. hockey win is 0-0. Nobody, he, the, America is based on scoring and, 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 and rapid. Our attention span is like that right now. 
So right. if you ain't you know, scoring I just, more quickly, I'm, then right. you know your your game is going to suffer. And that's why I look at baseball because it's they they've done some things with the pitch count, which I really like. Uh, you know, guys aren't able to get out. I mean, some young, young yeah, guys yeah, back baseball, today, man. You love you love no more. You love the all. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, he's like six on my list, but all right. <laughs> no more. You just no say that because you're Latino. No you just think of every Latino you, know, you can think of. No more steps out, wipes his brow, gets his, you know. Yeah, that was Manny, man. Manny was yeah, the coolest. You know, the brushes. Coolest. You might as well gather brush and brush his hair. Let me get a mirror. Let me look and see how I'm looking. That right was Manny, Manny, man. Before the dreads, especially when he had the lineup. Uh, man, Manny, Manny, was, Manny wasn't as bad as Nomar. Nomar, was, Nomar had all the other gear. Oh, yeah, the superstitious thing. Yeah, Nomar was, and all that yeah. stuff oh, yeah. on it. So, you know, I, I but for we, a little to a 10 year old me seeing me the way he was, man, I was, oh, man. Manny I, I just get him. up and swing. He was, the coolest, man. he was the coolest hitter, man. He was the coolest hitter. Manny just gets up and swings, man. So I, that's why, I, that's why that I always a, wonder that was about, a beautiful, that's that was a beautiful why swing. I always that was wonder about your Mount Rushmore because if I ask you about Manny, your eyes glaze, they go back in your head. But if I ask you about Big Poppy, you're going, I mean, who was your favorite player, Manny or Big Pop? Manny's my favorite player. Okay, okay. But Ortiz is more of Mount Rushmore than Manny because he didn't stay around. He just stuck around. So, but anyways, man, you gave me off. You gave me off, off topic here, man. I forgot I what am, but we, that's, that's what we do, Joseph. Yeah, I know. Just, just, <laughs> our pod, you know what? Our podcast is about. As I'm saying it, I'm like, that's what we. And do. it's about yeah. it's about having a conversation. If your conversation is is one sided. Then you need to go to somebody else's podcast because we're going right. to be talking about all kind of things. We're going to keep right. it on the hunt. I mean, we talk about all these things that happen. We talk about: Did you believe that Belichick hadn't got hired yet? How about that? Did you believe that? No. You're in the media. Do you believe that Bill oh, yeah, Belichick it, has not got a freaking job? Why? Because people reputations carry, man. They carry around, and people What's don't. His I, honestly, it's, I'm asking you general- on the spot right now. What's his reputation? Uh, my way or the highway, you know, uh, do this and there's no other option. I don't want to, I don't want any input. I just think it's, it's a generation. They don't, they don't, they don't abide by that. You see this? What does that mean? Six. Six? Six what? Six Super Champions? Bowls? Six Super Bowls? The how many get, one? How many you get with Tom Brady? How many with or with or without <laughs> Brady? Damn, how many Br- Brady got one without him? What, what does that mean? He did. <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean? Because he got one, but, he did. but but he had he had those pieces in line, and I don't think anybody can complain. I mean, he's going to go down as one of the great coaches. But I was yeah, reading something sure. the other day, and the guy didn't like this. He said, "With Belichick, you have to be able to go in essentially clean your entire building now, because he wants control in that way." It reminds me a lot of Bill Fitch that I had during the. Bill Fish wanted control of everything from the secretaries to the ball boy to the people sweeping the Max floor to the trades to the offseason moves. Yeah. He had all the, all the control. Yeah. And, and if you don't, and if you, if, if you are a coach, if you are That's an owner, cool, are you willing to sell your soul for that way to say, okay, yeah, I'm going to give you all the power. And then you start to look at his record in the last, what, four years. Now you're going Six Super Bowls, but you reckon the last four years? Mm-hmm. As this right. is really interesting. No, that's the thing, man. And look, I, I am surprised that he, he. There's no other injuries out there. That that does surprise me. But um, the Atlanta thing, though, doesn't shock me. When it came down to it, they hey, they made a decision. But I'm surprised that there is another that that phone's not ringing. Um, but we'll see. We'll wait and see. But what what does what 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 I was getting to earlier is if you're Victor Wimbayamba. Like defense is the number one most important thing in the world to you now. Now, okay. Welcome to the league, young fella. Welcome to the league. That's what Joel and B said to this guy, and and that's that's the way I see it. Joel and B said said that to him, and then gave him (laughs) seventy. Where's the D? What what are you talking about? Joel and B said that to him. He gave him I mean, 70. he didn't say that, man, but, you know. He gave him freaking 70, Joe Sway. He, he, was, he, was, he was, Yeah, he gave him 70, and a lot of it was on him. It was on his neck. I mean, yeah, he didn't say that, but it, look, look, my point is, 
from a tactical standpoint, if a guy goes off a of 70, whoever was defending him, like, like that's going to live for me forever. Like, look, Jalen Rose talks about the, the Kobe Bryant thing. Like, yo, he scored 81 on me. Like, uh, this got to be a sense of pride at some point being like, hey, or at least I'm going to be on the bench. Be like, yo, fellas, can y'all help me with this, too? Like, can, can we stop the guy scoring points on us? Well, <laughs> you know? it, it would see. But I think it's just as incumbent about your coach, though. If a guy's scoring that way, what do you do? Do you double team him? You get the ball out of his hands or a guy's that hot? Is that what you do? Or you just let him stay on the island by himself? Apparently, you mean you let him stay on the island by himself or you or you double team him and make him pass the ball to somebody else. So don't give me this. Don't don't give me this shit about it's the player that damn it might be the coach. Because if I if I need help and I need help a lot of times, I scream a help. I need help. (laughs) I'm not going to be like, no. But, but if you feel like, you know, I, I remember one of the, the best examples that we have with that is um, Paul Pierce. And um, I'm, I'm going to forget the guy's name right now. Uh, Harrington. Harrington was his name. You remember with Indiana? Uh, oh, Al Harrington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al yeah. Harrington was guarding Paul Pierce. That's right. Paul Pierce was scoring points. And somebody said, no, let me switch up. I got, I got it. And Al Harris just they waved him off, like, fuck that, I got it, I got it. And Paul Pierce dribbling and said, you got me? You got me. <laughs> That's right, okay. yeah, yeah. And Paul dropped, that was one of the most brutal moments, I that think, was I think, that Paul Pierce, that, that Paul Pierce had. That was, that, that was, was crazy. Yeah, I mean, because Paul is talking to him, dribbling, and, and he, he told him he was going to go, too. Harrington just wipes it. some guy, yo, switch, switch. Fuck that. I got him. I got him. And he's down this stance and Paul Pierce dribbling, looking at the clock. You got me? You got me? Okay, you got me. Oh man. Clap. With the jump shot. Oh my God. That was that was brutal. That was that was one of the, the nastiest, maybe one of the nastiest plays I think I've ever seen in Celtic history. Oh, agree. When you came to demoralizing a, a individual right. who was guarding somebody. I know Larry Larry's done stuff before when he was playing. And uh, I've seen him demoralize guys and teams. You know, Atlanta, when he shot the six, got the 60 on him in New Orleans and guys on their bench falling over like that on the mm-hmm. Atlanta bench and getting fined later on. But that particular moment on the floor, man on man on, and Paul to knock that down on Harrington like that, that was brutal. That was just freaking brutal. That's pure basketball, man. That's what, that's what it's about, you know, in the street. That makes you, you, you know what? That you makes can stop me, though. But see, that makes you that makes you happy because people, if you don't know it, this dude I'm looking at right now, Paul Pierce. If you want to see his face light up, let Paul get in the building. Let Paul Pierce get in the building. Joe Sway is like, oh, oh <laughs> Paul, what's going, on? Paul? Yeah, I'm thinking you're talking about basketball, man. Man, get out of here with that ball smile. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. you don't smile like that when Paul comes. <laughs> Oh, you gonna keep it on the hundred or what? I mean, I, I get I get hype. I mean, you, you know, we don't see him every day. We don't see him every day. As soon as I walk in the building, Paul's in the building. You've seen him before. You come up to me and go, "Have you seen him? You seen him?" I'm like who? He be asking for you. He, he sees me. He says, "What's up, Josue? How's your day?" After the quick exchange, we where's like, that? I'm like, where's like, that? And I thought it was damn Santa Claus or something. Did you see him? You see him? I'm like, who, who are you talking about? Paul Pierce. He's here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get so you don't know how hyped you get. The shit is just funny to me when he gets in the building. <laughs> I think I might do that with KG though. KG's in the building. I get pretty hyped about him. But I, I don't there get, you go. I don't get right, hyped, you I don't get hyped about Paul because I think he's talked shit to me so many years. I have a, I have a picture. <laughs> I have a picture that what? I have a picture. I have to get an autograph at Paul Pierce um, with my jersey on. Uh, well, with my number 31 on when they were tying my jersey, Paul Pierce had to wear it. I thought that was, a, it, it was brutal for him. He was like, I he to see that. He had to he wear it. He couldn't wait to take it off. He could not freaking wait to take it off. I just, I died. I died. Because all those years he was cheering against you, man. He's a Laker yeah. at heart. Damn, I hate him. That's what it is. Damn, I hate All him. Right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast, man. Uh, <laughs> good stuff. You already know. Subscribe, rate, review. Join uh, us. Support, guys, we really do. Peace out. We'll see, we'll see you guys next uh, We'll see you guys next week, man. Have a good one.